Hello chess friends and welcome to the of chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Gambit decline series. So in this series I'm going to show you this very nice opening from whites and from black's perspective and today we are starting a different defense that is possible in the Queen's Gambit decline. Today we'll start to see the so-called Austrian defense. The Austrian defense is a very aggressive method. Black uh, searches for qualification in the center after the first moves d4, uh, d5, c4 and c5. c5 is the actual Austrian defense move and in my opinion the Austrian defense is a bad opening this is something that black should try to avoid so that's why we'll see only this alternate defense from white's perspective so actually in the mini series that i prepared for you uh we'll see only how to beat the alternate defense because uh, it doesn't make sense maybe to make a whole series about an opening that's not good and that you probably not play so uh, maybe this alternate defense can be used as a surprise uh, moment as a surprise element in order to maybe spice up the game somehow in order may maybe to uh get you into some territory where you may be unprepared but uh, in my opinion as i said black should try to avoid the, the austrian offense and in this video i wanted to show a really cool and aggressive message how to beat this messed up opening so let's see now what are the ideas of blacks and um, what are the main problems in the austrian offense why is this opening so bad okay what black is hoping for like in the tarash and semi tarash defenses is to have a clarification in the center but notice one huge huge difference about the tarash and semi tarash in the semi tarash and tarash knight to f6 and but at least the move e6 has been played and the the cool part about the move e6 and knight to f6 are um that you have already control of the d5 score in this scenario in this austrian defense you don't have the control of the d5 score so that's why my recommendation like in this uh, types of structure in the tarash and also we have seen it also in the baltic defense is simply to undermine the pressure in the center of the world release the pressure uh go into a, a slight slight favorable game because here after move d5 your opponent has already to make a reaction of course there are opportunities to play maybe the move knight to f6 uh, but today we'll analyze only this line with the move queen to d5 and okay again the good part i think the only good part about the alternate defense is a clarification black is hoping for to simplify the game to trade off the queen to trade off the center and then uh, the position should be probably equal and then black can have at least a draw but the downside you see now in this particular continuation the queen is already in the center of the board and when the queen comes early out then the queen becomes many times a huge huge tactical problem and that's also in this particular example so here first of all we see there is a tension around the square d4 so that's what we developed with knight to f3 we still have a good control of the d4 square but now after move c takes d4 here my recommendation is not to take on d4 immediately here we have immediately the opportunity to get an extra tempo here after move queen to f5 let's stop and evaluate a little bit the position because, uh, because it's very important to know this why is uh, this opening bad for black uh, when we watch now this position we can say that actually the only good piece of blacks is the queen because the queen is playing but uh, white has already three pieces out white has already the two knights out and we can also consider that the queen is already playing because the d file is open because we can take out of course immediately the d pawn so actually in this position three pieces of whites are playing even the bishop here uh, of uh, the dark square bishop but of course also the light square bishop is playing so we can say maybe that four pieces of whites are playing but only two pieces of blacks are playing and the uh, white has a good control of the center of the board and still a very important thing is that black didn't solve every problem about the queen still the queen is a little bit exposed so the queen will be attacked further in the continuation of the game so white will for sure get some extra tempi against the queen so that's why i think uh this is really a bad opening uh, maybe you will lose maybe um, you not find really some bad continuations in your own games but uh, believe me in 90 percent of uh, of this uh, alternate defense white is simply winning the game because of the beautiful piece activity so here knight to d4 is my recommendation to go into uh, this line we have now centralized knight which in uh, in the later stage of the game has to be kicked away of course from the center of the board so we have here now this continuation knight to f6 and now my recommendation is to play here bishop to d2 because this move is a developing move okay maybe this is not an optimal square for the bishop but at least this bishop is controlling both diagonals and still it's 
targeting the queen again the queen will lose another tempo again the queen has to move somewhere and you have time then again maybe to develop further your pieces so it's i think a beautiful move this bishop to d2 so here your opponent will probably try to move queen to uh, pardon me e5 attacking the knight and now my recommendation is to play a knight to b5 so this is now a very very tricky move because there are some ideas of knight to d5 followed with knight to c7 but we'll come to that part now let's see what are black opportunities here in the continuation of the game so the first example that i wanted to show you in this particular line is a beautiful game played by the top grandmaster alexei shirov against Wesserberg. and alexei shirov was the former world uh, number two uh, he is really one of the best tacticians of all times he's a great attacker and especially in this open games you see what shirov will do here against the ulster defense here uh so shirov will destroy this opening with beautiful beautiful tactical shots so uh here after move knight to b5 in the game uh sh that should have played his opponent tried to move bishop to b4 and it's quite a logical move it's a developing move and black is hoping to finally secure the king develop somewhere the the light for bishop get then maybe the knight into the game and hope for the best but here shirov is not allowing this scenario with a beautiful tactical methods he plays now first of all the move a3 uh he forces again black to make a move we have bishop to c3 but now it's not time to take out uh, the bishop immediately now comes a beautiful tactical sequence knight to d6 and this is this is must know theory uh, in this particular line knight to d6 is really beautiful because after king to e7 again you get a tempo bishop to c3 notice black has lost the privilege of castling black's king is sick uh, on a dark square black doesn't have any more the dark square bishop black's king is in its in the center of the board the queen is in danger so this is a really monstrous monstrous position for white so here in the continuation we had the queen to d5 black hoped for to simplify the game again by trading off the queens but it doesn't matter because shirov played on his main plan uh, of on this move bishop to b4 to build a windmill tactic now you see there is always the discovered threat okay black could have maybe taken the queen on d1 this wasn't played in the game but actually the po the position is so bad that the, the, even this line is not helping out to black because after rook to d1 look at this bishop to d7 can be played and now you're getting into a windmill tactic look at this again a new check again we play knight to c4 again we can take out this pawn and this is really a fun game to play for white for sure so this is simply not working for black so after move bishop to b4 that uh, should have played uh we had knight to c6 attacking now finally the bishop we have a knight takes c8 which is now of course a double check so no one can escape from a double check at least should have uh, gained the piece now we have king to e6 and now a beautiful stunning move g3 and this is a pervert uh, move by alexia shirov this is beautiful what he did here he wants to actually reach uh this uh this uh, square d6 uh, because he wants to deflect now the queen from from the square so he's trying also of course to play bishop to g2 and then uh of course queen to d6 is going to happen so here his opponent tried uh we uh queen to h1 but now the queen is coming into the game queen to d6 we have king to f5 queen to d3 the only way to protect this is of course to play uh e4 if you play queen to e4 of course you get the fork here on d6 so this is not working so uh, we had e4 we had knight to d, uh, d6 anyway we have queen to g6 and now beautiful move queen to b5 threatens now uh queen to f5 followed followed uh, with the bishop to d2 if of course the king gets on a dark square so really really uh already a bad game for black so in the continuation we had knight to e7 protecting uh the square f5 we had the knight to c4 also threatening now the move knight to knight to e5 so uh here you could have also played queen to b7 but uh, here uh, should have played maybe the slightly worst uh, continuation when it comes to computer evaluation but this is still devastating this is still a monstrous move uh, the evaluation here is much much better in the continuation we have here uh knight to c6 attacking the bishop queen to b7 was now played by shield attacking the knight and now after move knight takes b4 now comes again and a new beautiful tactical sequence that should have been played here knight to e5 first the check king to f5 and now a takes b4 it's really really beautiful because you cannot actually take out uh here the knight on e5 if you do that then you're getting into a force checkmate look at this the rook is coming into the game that's the beauty about a takes b4 because it opens simply the the file now the rook can be included into the game look at this uh, you have to play something like king to d6 we can play here rook to a6 a new check now even f4 look at this you have to take ampassan e takes f3 but now with queen to d6 we're uh, getting a new check 
again when you check you can maybe escape but now with queen to c2 look at this the pawn is not anymore there uh there's not no good protector against the king you have to play something like knight to e4 queen to e4 f5 look at this this is now beautiful beautiful check mid input so as i said this is not working after a takes b4 you don't have time uh, to take out uh the, the knight on e5 so that's why here uh, a5 was played not allowing rook to a5 by um, by white but now knight to f7 simply attacking the rook uh we have rook to f8 now again rook to c1 trying to include this rook uh, in a different way into the attack we have h6 knight to d6 a check we have king to g6 rook to c7 uh threatening here to take out the pawn on g7 so we hit here knight to h5 and now a beautiful move by shield f3 this f3 disconnects of course the queen uh from this pawn on e4 this pawn on e4 was actually a good defender for the whole game for black now it gets disconnected from the queen we have queen to, uh, h7 queen to e4 check uh, king to g8 again a new check and now uh, alexa shirov simply took and this is now completely completely winning endgame here for uh for white so rook to f6 uh, knight to e4 again an attack against the rook we have rook to g6 we have a queen to f5 rook to a6 and ever h4 in this position uh alexis shirov's opponent resigned there is no uh control play against h5 or then if you try h5 then also knight to uh, knight to g5 is working so you're getting again into a checkmate uh, checkmate pattern so really stunning game uh, by alexis shirov but let's go back uh let's see after moves bishop to d5 e5 knight to b5 bishop to b4 we play a3 this is the must know theory after bishop to c3 first the check then the tempo against the queen and then the windmill tactic i guarantee you you have a good game in this in this continuation so let's see different ideas what black can also play uh here uh, we can play for uh, again the ulcer defense let's see possible continuations again we play this line knight to c3 we're getting an extra tempo against the queen queen to a5 knight takes d4 and now after knight to f6 again bishop to d2 again e5 knight to b5 and here after move queen to b6 uh, look at this for instance if you play here knight to c6 uh, that's the problem i think i think uh, about uh, uh, the alternate fence you get this one knight to d5 discover the attack and the problem is now if you take uh, queen to b5 then you get knight to c7 so there's simply look at this there's simply too much pressure around around the, the square c7 actually many times the c7 square is a huge tactical problem in black's positions but okay after move knight to b5 here queen to b6 was played so in our previous analysis we have seen the move bishop to b4 now let's see what the, uh let, sorry uh, let's see what happens if queen to b6 happens so if the queen gets here on this square that's okay you have escaped with your queen but again you didn't solve any problem about the queen the queen is still so endangered because now we can play e4 and after something like a6 there's no good way to get this knight out of game because bishop to e3 is still working really really uh, stunning moves here after move bishop to c5 bishop to c5 queen to c5 and now rook to c1 that's also must know theory you would you play rook to c1 look at this and there is now a beautiful tension here on the c file for instance if you take uh the knight on b5 then you get this one knight to d5 discovered attack against the queen and where's the where's the queen going queen to a7 maybe we can take it out and here maybe we play king to d7 we can also take out this rook so it's completely completely lost game here for for black for sure so you see how really bad already black's position is because you played so many times with the queen i'm not sure how many times really now four or five times the queen has already played in this particular game so now uh meanwhile white has developed my white has brought many pieces into the game so here in the continuation uh maybe black could play the move bishop to g4 and i found really beautiful game between rochstein against stefan uh again in this particular line after move bishop to g4 again this tactical shot knight to d5 is working even the queen can be hanging uh here because of course after bishop to d1 her rook takes c5 now black actually castle but whatever you do you can even take maybe a takes b5 but look at this now rook to c8 is going to happen we can take out this rook maybe you can take out also the knight but now we can take out also the knight the bishop is hanging uh, the pawn on uh, the pawn on b5 is hanging so it's i think a position that black should resign so really really immortal mortal tactical shots are possible here after kingside casting uh here continuation knight to f6 was played 
gtx f6 knight to c7 again the rook is hanging we had this one uh knight to d7 but now after rook to c1 two pieces are hanging so in this position actually uh black resigned so really really cool game here was played by uh, by white so as i said these ideas are not working many times you see the grip the queen gets so endangered that you have so many uh, and too many tactical problems so let's see now a different example uh here again we have the alternate defense again this line your opponent could maybe try queen to d6 this i've uh, move i've already see, also seen in my life and this is again sort of a method in which black is trying to simplify the game and what the black is hoping for is maybe after move queen to d4 to simplify the game after queen to d4 and knight to d4 but even in this position this is not good for black because okay you have can maybe have your fun with e5 but now we play knight to b5 and there's only good way maybe to defend the c7 square by playing the move knight to a6 but this is not working because of g3 g3 is many times a move that you have to memorize uh, in the austrian attack look at this your opponent could try maybe here the move bishop to uh, d7 we simply develop and the problem is now if you try to compete here uh, with the move bishop to c6 nothing special we can simply kingside castle you can maybe take we improve the position of the king maybe the bishop can be even included into the game but look at this now with the rook, rook to d1 a knight to d6 again we have so many so many tactical problems maybe you can develop knight to e7 look at this bishop to e3 this is also a beautiful square for uh for white to attack knight to a7 can be played knight to d6 knight to d5 a3 b4 are possibilities the rook to c1 so every move i think that white is playing now is perfectly fine so nothing special also after this line after move queen takes d4 so i'm telling you this because don't be scared so much about this idea of blacks when he wants to trade off the kings because notice even in this scenario we have already two pieces out and black has none so it's i think a huge huge difference in development now white should be much much better in the continuation so, so here i found a beautiful game between ivan ivanishovic against igor miladinovic uh, in this particular line where black didn't want to uh, take out the queen on d4 black developed with the move e6 we play bishop to f4 uh, here queen to d4 and here uh ivanishev tried knight to d4 uh, ivan ivanishevich is really a strong player uh his rating is around 2650 he's really really a brilliant attacker also uh, and um, um he, uh, i think his his games are also worth the study so after move knight to d4 uh here we have the problem again around the square uh, c7 so that's why black in the game prevented this idea so igor miladino which played a6 is not allowing here to move knight to b5 but now g3 and again you see this move g3 is a beautiful idea because it gives us new opportunities around the square b7 it can be also uh, very important maybe to include the rook into the game on c8 so many attacking opportunities here for black for sure so we have here now bishop to b4 bishop to g2 the problem is now if you take bishop takes c3 look at this b takes c3 is going to happen you can maybe develop with knight to uh, d7 but now with bishop to d6 uh, this is the problem so black cannot even simplify the game and maybe create here some structural weakness okay we have an isolated pawn but look at this now bishop to d6 is preventing a uh, black from calcing you can maybe play knight to e7 we play simply c4 we're not allowing even this knight to be cemented on d5 so now we can also play rook to b1 attacking further uh the b7 score so it's again a huge huge uh tactical loss game for black for sure so uh, this is not working look at this knight to f5 you play knight to f5 e takes f5 still the bishop pair is much much better here so uh, as i said after move bishop to g2 so that's why bishop to c3 wasn't played in the game uh, here knight to e7 uh was the idea to maybe play knight to c6 one of these knights again uh, here uh, around the square c6 but here we have kingside casting we had knight to d7 knight to e4 uh this is really beautiful because if you play now uh, e5 here immediately then we have also beautiful counter attack a3 uh, if you play bishop to a5 then we can play knight to d6 and we got all out of this mess sorry i get a call we're not going to answer that so look at this there's so many so many ideas that um, um 
uh, white can play so it's simply a devastating position we have king to f8 now knight to b3 seem working for the chasing the bishop so these ideas again are not good for black so after move knight to d7 uh here vanisha which played as we said knight to e4 we had knight to uh d5 knight to d6 we have king to uh e7 and now bishop to d5 e takes d5 but look at this now both of these knights are dancing here around black's king and the cool part is that we have created here isolated pawn on d5 uh the bishop is not developed this knight is on a weird square the bishop is also vulnerable to some attacks a3 b4 so it was again a bad game for black so uh king to f8 rook from a to c1 attacking the bishop we have g6 we have now knight to e3 attacking now the weak pawn on uh, d5 but look at this now knight to f6 comes of course with bishop to e5 the knight is pinned uh this pawn uh, is lost so it's again a completely completely lost game here for for black so we have here bishop to e7 protecting everything a rook to c7 attacking the bishop and then trying of course maybe rook takes e7 foul with a knight to d5 so that's why here we have bishop to d8 but it doesn't get better because uh here ivanishevich played a brilliant move a rook to c1 doubles up the rooks includes now more pieces into the attack we have bishop to h3 rook takes b7 king to rook to g8 this other rook comes into the game bishop to c8 we have in this one rook to a7 brilliant bring tactic rook to a7 now after this one in this position uh black resigned there's no good way to protect everything we can always uh take out here simply the knight the bishop is pinned so it's game over for sure so really really wild stuff uh you see how many pr developing problems always but always black is in the ha has in the continuation of the game this is really something worth to notice uh, even as we have seen even when your opponent is training off the queens even when he simplifies the game even when the game is not so complicated don't worry so much because i think the lack of development is his main issue so let's see different opportunities uh, we are having again this position 90 c3 now we see when your opponent is maybe retreating here to d6 so now as we said it doesn't matter we can trade off the the queens knight to d4 your opponent is playing maybe the move a6 but look at this with knight to d5 we can attack the position immediately your opponent has to play uh here some weird moves like uh, king to d8 now knight to b6 we can attack and look at this now after bishop to have four the position is already already messed up your opponent can maybe pry a knight to d7 but look at this even uh, king queenside castling is here an opportunity and that's exactly a beautiful threat uh here in the austrian defense because look at this after if you take for instance the uh, the knight on b6 then knight to e6 is going to happen discover check you have to play uh here king to e8 and then with rook to d8 you're getting getting checkmate so really really uh, wild stuff so you see queenside casting your opponent has to maybe step back and now with bishop to c7 uh, again everything is paralyzed uh, the bishop is hanging uh, the rook is hanging so it's a position that you can resign so this also is not working again i'm pointing out even in this scenario um have removed queen to d8 don't be so scared your opponent maybe main idea is to simplify the game but his idea is wrong his idea doesn't make sense because still you're having such a such a beautiful activity especially around the square b5 so uh, let's see a different example uh your opponent could try maybe different ideas uh, could maybe try here from move knight to d4 he could try develop with bishop to d7 which is also a normal idea at least he's not uh allowing you this move knight to b5 but again uh here queen to b3 you he cannot actually protect everything uh that's i think his main issue because now the b7 is, is a weakness if you play b6 then of course you're vulnerable to some light square attacks look at this g3 bishop to g2 bishop to d2 is again working this motif you should not forget again with knight to b5 knight to c7 so your opponent cannot protect everything that's the down side about uh, the Austrian defense here are from queen to b3 your opponent could try maybe knight to a6 to create a dangerous attack against the queen but actually we should just take queen to b7 a rook to b8 and now we simply take out another pawn your opponent could try maybe be aggressive with the e5 but look at this knight to b3 knight to b3 is a line in after move bishop to d7 that you have to memorize and it's actually a risky line but uh i'm showing you this line because 
if you know it you win the games for sure because your opponent has here the opportunity to play maybe knowing rook takes b3 okay we take out the rook your opponent can also take out the rook and uh, your bishop is hanging but look at this now with queen to a8 first we uh, create a check your opponent has to play king to e7 and now with king to d1 okay you are down a piece and uh, it seems so that something went wrong in your position but actually this is not so good anyway for for black because first of all we have a tension on the a file in the near future we'll play e3 or e4 where the knight is hanging so the bishop cannot protect this uh, the bishop cannot protect this also on c8 because both of these squares are covered by the queen and by the potential uh, bishop's activity but already the knight is there so uh not a good way here to protect it so your opponent could try maybe to move bishop to e6 attacking the b3 weakness but now we play simply e3 after bishop to b3 we play king to d2 and now finally the knight is hanging your opponent could try maybe this idea but look at this now with queen to b7 your opponent has to play something like king to f6 and now we take out here the bishop or we could have also taken the knight but the, the downside again in black's position is that uh white's king is much much more secure although we have to say it's not an optimal square for the king but um uh, we have an extra pawn that's a good side and of course we have uh, the bishop pair on the board uh which could be very dangerous for black especially because of this endangered king on f6 so this idea is also not working so let's go back after move bishop to d7 my recommendation is just queen to b3 if your opponent wants to fix the position with the move bishop to c6 will simply take out the bishop and then go into a favorable endgame uh with the bishop pair in such an open game of course this is then devastating for black so this is also not working so let's see a different idea for uh, for black maybe black could play an early e5 move let's see this particular line so e5 without uh playing knight to f6 bishop to d7 without playing any uh peace moves but now again knight to b3 is also perfectly fine we get an extra uh, tempo against the queen queen to c7 look at this again the queen gets more and more endangered uh queen to d8 we can support maybe further the position with the move e4 bishop to e6 so you just play healthy chess as i like to say you develop your pieces on the best course bishop to uh b5 knight to c6 king side casting a6 maybe bishop to c4 just continue the pressure around the square d5 uh which is also perfectly fine we have here maybe knight to f6 bishop to g5 uh here bishop to e7 can play queen to f3 it's perfectly fine so this is the position perfect position in the near future we'll play also rook to d1 rook from f to d1 maybe rook from a to c1 getting both of these rooks on this file so i can guarantee you again a good game so this is the way to go this is now our first video how to beat uh, um, uh, the Austrian defense in my opinion these methods are good you see the lack of development are very very uh, important to know this in black's position don't be surprised by this opening you see it many times uh, but as i said in the later stage of the game i think you can have really a good position and you can destroy your opponent with some good attacking chances so okay uh, i hope that you enjoyed this video um, and i hope that you apply uh, some of these ideas against the ulcer defense if you want to see more about the queen's game decline please check out our whole series uh, here's the uh, link to our playlist where we have seen some different ideas like the taraj defense she in defense a harvest attack and many many more and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course